bah, merci Grégory. Donc oui, c'est un, un honneur pour moi de, de participer à ces tables rondes et keynotes à Laval Virtual, quand même un rendez-vous bien connu d'arrêté virtuel et augmenté en France depuis plus de 20 ans. L'usine digitale, c'est le média de la transformation numérique et euh, voilà, de, de l'innovation numérique de manière générale. Et moi, je m'occupe spécifiquement de la réalité virtuelle et augmentée. Donc, notre première keynote sera faite en anglais par Andras. So, Andras Kemeni is an expert leader uh, simulation in VR at Renault. Renault is a leading French manufacturer for cars and, and the like. Uh, he's also director of the laboratory for immersive visualization of uh, Paris, Arimetier and Renault. He's a really old school guy, he's been there for a long time. He's been very good for a long time, and that's why he's our first keynote speaker. So Andreas, please come on stage, and uh, I give it to you. Thank you. Uh, that's a uh, difficult task to start uh, at 10 o'clock in the morning, so uh, I was told that uh, progressively we'll have more and more people here. Um, Julian asked me to speak about the uh, advent of uh, VR and AR techniques uh, in the automobile uh, field. Um, so I have prepared something which is uh, giving a, um, a uh, sight uh, insight also on what was uh, achieved uh, since uh, the 60s. Um, I will try also uh, give the uh, point of view of Renault. I guess that you are here for also for uh, to, to know a little bit more about what the uh, industrial uh, car makers want uh, and they use today in this field. Um, in fact, uh, I prepared something uh, in four points. One is uh, just to um, go back uh, from the, uh, to the 60s because, in fact, uh, um, some of the people speak about the VR since uh, Google uh, and um, Facebook and Oculus, but uh, VR and AR are here since a long time. Uh, I wanted to also, uh, as a second point, to um, give an overview of uh, VR and AR in the automotive area and the last techniques concerning the AR, which is um, on board in the vehicles, so it's not only a uh, helmets, but it's also HUD and AR in the car. Uh, I will, uh, as a third point, I wanted to um, speak a little bit about the difficulties, uh, especially uh, cyber sickness, and uh, at the last, uh, just uh, give some uh, uh, thoughts about the uh, future uh, we um, see at Renault uh, uh, in this field. Okay, so the first point, first point uh, from the 60s, head-mount displays, we started uh, the late uh, 60s, just a um, link between virtuality and driving simulation, uh, which was, um, uh, which uh, are really uh, interacted in at Renault from the very beginning. And uh, one of the new, uh, not so new, but uh, in movement today, which is for feedback and uh, interactions, the graphics are um, there since uh, a while, so it's uh, quite uh, largely used, but uh, interactions are in, in um, strong development today. Okay, so that's an image uh, most of you, you know. Um, Sutherland uh, HMD, head mounted display, 68. You see that's quite intrusive, but uh, we have uh, them already, so uh, 50 years back there. And naturally, it was not very uh, used yet because uh, the picture is maybe not very good, but it was uh, wireless uh, images. As we know that the um, computer graphics uh, uh, CGI arrived equally in the 60s, uh, but uh, with our texture mapping and so on, it arrived um, mostly uh, in the 90s uh, and uh, from 2000. So uh, it will allow me to uh, jump to the 2000 and that's something uh, this year, so uh, let's say almost uh, 20 years ago, that was really the beginning of uh, VR. Uh, so you see there are two images. One is uh, showing uh, the first cave in France, 2001, at uh, Arts et Médias Paris, Paris Tech at uh, chalon sur saône And you see also a, um, a driving simulator, the cards, 
comprehensive automobile R&D simulator, which uh, started the same year. And uh, you uh, see uh, that there, are, there is a uh, motion platform, hexapod motion platform, so it's providing uh, uh, the um, feeling of the accelerations. Merci beaucoup. But also you see a, a helmet, uh, that's a ProView uh, 60, which, um, uh, which was introduced on the market in the 90s. So you see that uh, at this point you were already using uh, uh, image, uh, physical sensations, and sound, three of the uh, main senses, uh, of the five senses uh, of humans. So, um, uh, Virtual reality and uh, maybe I would say also augmented reality uh, are covering uh, closer fields. I don't want to enter in the uh, definition of virtual reality. Uh, you have heard uh, lots of uh, definitions probably. There is one on the, uh, on the slide. Uh, what is important to note that uh, in addition to CGI, the interaction, force feedback and immers immersion mental and physical immersion, which are the main uh, points for VR. And if you see here, I, I guess it should work. So uh, you see that uh, in uh, such a driving simulator, you had already the, uh, a VR helmet, immersive helmet, but also you could have uh, a cylindrical screen. So uh, anyway, that's, that's VR. And um, Something very close, that's uh, one of the uh, caves of Renault. That's the 70 million 3D pixels uh, cave, 4K technology for all of the, uh, all of the uh, faces. And naturally, for both of, both of these uh, equipment installations, you have uh, some of the same problems, VRIs, VR-induced sickness effects, and haptics rendering. So uh, to Come to haptics that's, um, and interactions. Um, let's see. I hope you will really see it uh, well. So you have here tangible contacts. So uh, you are picking up some of the uh, functions. You want to design. So it's engineering design, ergonomics engineering design, design for the vehicle. And naturally, that's. Um, you have, you need this contact, but you need also the precision, the accuracy to uh, touch at the right point if you want to design your uh, ergonomics correctly. And here, you are in a driving situation as you are a car maker at Renault. Um, so you put this uh, virtual mock-up, VMU, in a um, road environment in real time, so it's a specific situation, but anyway, VR uh, today is completely uh, real time. It can be hard real time, but anyway, it's um, in a direct use. So it's interesting because for interactions, that's, uh, as I said, it's a uh, field which is in strong uh, development. If you look at the image at the left, that's uh, an application uh, which is uh, autonomous driving, which is just driving to, uh, to all of us. In a couple of years, everybody will have a uh, certain level, naturally, autonomous vehicle. And, and uh, um, here, for example, uh, somebody is using uh, a uh, haptic display, but he can use, uh, she can use also uh, her smartphone. So we need to uh, validate the driving conditions and the ergonomics of the car. And again, uh, we need this uh, tangible contact, but also uh, sometimes we need to know what we are touching. So uh, uh, a couple of months ago, uh, and you have here at uh, Level Virtual a, a, a demonstration of uh, one of the systems uh, from uh, Clarté. And I don't know if you see very well, but in the helmet, the H HTC uh, Vive helmet, you see the, uh, on the left hand, the uh, interior of the vehicle, and the cobot, a cooperative uh, robot, is bringing under your hands, under your fingers, the different uh, surfaces. It can be leather, it can be uh, plastic, it can be uh, uh, glass or anything else. So uh, that's, that's uh, a field, uh, lots of uh, studies are 
both in research and uh, industry applications are happening. Uh, so um, there is a, also a, a strong movement from uh, VR to AR. It doesn't say that uh, we are le leaving uh, VR, we are keeping, we stay in VR, but uh, the uh, AR is uh, coming very uh, quickly also. So I would like to um, uh, first uh, show a, some of the applications, um, which has started already, um, again, almost 15 years ago in ER, and, and to say why we moved uh, for some of the applications to caves, and um, show the AR applications in driving conditions, and naturally for autonomous driving, uh, as I introduced uh, just before. So here you see at the, at the left hand a uh, physical prototype. So it's for a uh, vehicle architecture application. And um, we started to use uh, VR helmets uh, maybe uh, 15 years ago. Uh, it's again the ProView 60. And on the right hand you see uh, Javier who is, uh, who is uh, listening to us. Uh, we um, developed uh, and it was uh, deployed uh, strongly introduced in the vehicle development cycle uh, from 2004. That's an AR helmet. And the interesting thing for AR helmet was that we could uh, superpose and compare um, the proposed CAT CAM uh, uh, vehicle interior to that which is physical. So we, for example, we can, uh, uh, the driver uh, can be placed uh, in a real vehicle, which can be a Renault car or a, 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 a car of the, uh, a concurrent uh, company. Um, and we were convinced at the time that uh, helmets were uh, uh, very competitive comparatively to uh, capes because the, uh, at the time the resolution of capes was not so, so good. Though um, uh, 2011, 2012, the 4K technology has arrived and we said, uh, whoa, uh, that's that's a technology which can provide very high level image quality for some uh, new applications like passive quality with good luminosity, uh, good contrast level, good black level, um, a very high resolution, close to high resolution. So um, um, that's this uh, cave uh, application. <coughs> and uh, after uh, uh, we um, introduced again for AR automotive uh, um, onboard AR applications, uh, driving simulation. So if you um, look at this uh, short film, that's a uh, small simulator with a uh, translucent um, uh, sh uh, shield and there, there are the informations which are supposed to display on the windshield. So if you are in a uh, autonomous uh, driving situation, you can test a different situation. If, if uh, for example, the uh, cutting is uh, carried out in the way the driver wants or the driver wants to be a little uh, more uh, uh, efficient, more aggressive. Uh, you know, uh, today some of the AI technology uh, also became more aggressive to be more efficient for autonomous driving. So that's one application which uh, becomes uh, very important and it's a good field of, uh, of application for uh, VR, AR. So just a word on autonomous driving. As you, s you know that um, car makers and suppliers are proposing uh, AD uh, for uh, better safety levels, uh, stress-free, uh, less stress on, on the road, and naturally free time. But we need the acceptation level. Some of the people are still aware or afraid of, of uh, this technology, and each rate has to be safe. So we need uh, validation. And um, again, for validation, we put uh, people in situations. So you at, yeah, you're looking at the uh, images at the left, left side. That's, that's a funny sign because it's a uh, Max Planck uh, uh, robot driving simulator, which is both a driving simulator but also a robot and both a uh, VR installation because in the uh, 
at, at the, um, in the cab. Uh, there is visualization that you have um, a driver. You can uh, see uh, right now. So you have a force feedback, and there is a spher spherical uh, display of the, uh, of the situation. And then you can um, uh, test and validate uh, different situation. A uh, more uh, traditional installation on the right uh, side of this image, that's a, uh, a more traditional driving simulator with hexapod, but also with um, linear actuators to really uh, provide the uh, feeling uh, on, on the road. And you can put in different uh, uh, situations, uh, light conditions, weather conditions, and naturally to um, follow the different scenarios you have put uh, for the user. And um, just the uh, image below, uh, that's the new uh, driving simulation center of Renault. Uh, that's a 25 million euros project, which uh, will be in use uh, next year. So that's the type of, uh, of situation uh, you can validate. As I said, the uh, CGI is now at a good quality, so that's not necessarily easy. Not necessarily so difficult, I, I mean, it's easy now. Uh, naturally, the scenario definition is a little more complicated. And just to finish, uh, we decide we can uh, go further and we can um, also uh, provide participati participative uh, networking tools. So for example, here you can see that uh, you can have a smartphone application. In fact, this application is existing. You can uh, uh, download it, 3D AV Explore. Um, and you can put on your smartphone and you can look at it in uh, 3D with a uh, uh, Omido uh, glasses, I guess it's five euros, or in a uh, helmet or with a uh, tablet and, and, and you can enter in a traffic which is provided by a number of uh, different people who are using at the same time. Okay, cyber sickness, we don't uh, speak so much here at Laval uh, about cyber sickness because we are all excited about the technology and uh, we love, we do, and we are probably used to it. And uh, the uh, younger generations, especially when, you are, when they are uh, gamers, they are not necessarily so uh, um, concerned by uh, simulation sickness, motion sickness, but that's something which is uh, there. So I wanted to uh, uh, say just a couple of words about why and what is the impact on industrial and uh, public user of this technology. So here, for example, you see uh, a uh, navigation in a uh, virtual environment. That's a navigation which uh, wants to be um, nature in a way that's using smartphone and with uh, manipulations you are used to do. And uh, you are um, navigating in this environment and naturally you do lots of uh, uh, things. For example, you are turning, but uh, your eyes see that you are turning, and your, your fingers say also that you are turning, but your head, inner uh, ears are not saying that it's turning. So at exactly on the right hand, you see a uh, 150 degrees field of view uh, in a simulator. And the little story is that when uh, we started with just one central field, it was okay, and we, when we extended, uh, we had lots of motion sickness because the immersion level become, became very good. And as, as uh, the driving was uh, in static conditions, there was a conflict, uh, sensory conflict. That, that's something which you can uh, feel in uh, helmets, HMDs also. So I won't enter into the details, uh, but um, naturally, uh, uh, current theories are speaking about sensory conflict or uh, stability uh, balance uh, system. Naturally, the main factors are including the visual vestibular conflict, and that's a, uh, a problem when you are navigating. Uh, there is also the accommodation, uh, which, is, which can be in conflict with the binocular uh, vergence, and that's why the uh, light field technology is proposed uh, today. Transport delay, if the uh, image is uh, displayed a little after uh, your actions, that can be a problem. It is still uh, a problem in uh, 
a number of capes and helmets, and each really the expectations. You are expecting something and something else is arriving, uh, as that's typically a VR issue because you are providing uh, uh, artificial uh, environments, then can, then can be a problem. Uh, we have uh, tested that in different uh, uh, conditions, for example, in a uh, uh, full HD cave and with a cave, uh, with a helmet, but in uh, limited motion and we uh, compared and we uh, could see that for uh, high rotations uh, it can introduce uh, cyber sickness. And as you see here on this uh, slide, that there are people who are uh, easily uh, ill and some others who are uh, rarely, but uh, the majority of pe people uh, can be uh, sensitive to the techniques we are employing, impl employing to uh, reduce these uh, effects. So the future of the VR, uh, naturally that's a subject uh, different people have different opinions, but um, I wanted to show uh, some of the um, market uh, data and, and some of the uh, internal experiences we had with uh, 3D glasses and VR helmets. And but uh, we do uh, think about uh, the use of this technology uh, and the different applications, and finally the future ranging desk, which will arrive in the next year. So uh, I guess uh, the Gartner uh, curve, you know it. Uh, probably we are somewhere uh, in a place uh, there are lots of expectations, and uh, we'll see if uh, <laughs> that will work or not. And, um, and there are two in the interesting things which are on this um, uh, visual. On the right side, it's uh, said that the AR is much, much uh, bigger market uh, than the VR, and it's arriving progressively. Maybe it's not completely seen today, but uh, probably it will arrive the next year, and I will try to say why. And on the left side, on the b below, you can see that uh, there are very strong investments in the, in the US especially the uh, Facebook uh, investment, but also the Magic Leap, uh, which has also invested uh, a couple of uh, billions of uh, dollars. And if you compare uh, with what happens in France, uh, we see that um, we compare billions of dollars with millions of dollars. So we uh, should uh, do uh, maybe 1,000 times better if you want to be uh, really uh, competitive. I guess it's not for tomorrow. So just a couple of examples on the left side with uh, uh, naturally, the uh, big uh, actors uh, like Dassault, Airbus, PSC, Renault, uh, EDF, uh, Dassault Systems, uh, which have uh, uh, systems we all try all the time and uh, we introduce and use in uh, our uh, engineering design. Some of, the some of the examples, immersion, which is very present here at Level Ritual, uh, which raise uh, some um, money, uh, Jota with uh, Safran, um, Octal uh, for uh, the AV simulation GB with Renault, and Realize uh, Real 3D um, twice in 2015 and 2017. You see still uh, limited investments. And on the right side, you uh, see a couple of images. Uh, on, the, on the very right side, you uh, see uh, two um, executive, executive managers and Renault uh, with uh, HoloLens uh, helmets, which are very promising because they are completely uh, autonomous, um, wireless, with onboard uh, intelligence or CPU capabilities. Uh, still, it's a little limited, but we are looking for the next generation, which will arrive next year. And you see all the, the Star VR, which is also a uh, present at uh, Laval, uh, with one of the um, very highest level executive member at Renault. So we are all uh, excited about helmets. Still, uh, still uh, for uh, engineering design, uh, we still use uh, caves. And I uh, try to say why. Um, here for the usages, you um, see just a very short uh, video on uh, uh, Industry 4.0, a virtual uh, factory application. So that's something uh, where I believe that uh, AR helmets will arrive very quickly, though uh, uh, the uh, application you have seen it with uh, HTC Vive, though the uh, HoloLens are arriving. And if you see the usages, 
as it is today. Uh, VR is really a more uh, uh, used for engineering design, and AR uh, is progressively in which a factor in the embedded applications. Nature Aid, there are the health issues uh, concerning the cyber sickness, which is uh, not really an issue for AR, which is explaining also why AR will arrive easily. And naturally, for the evolution, uh, I put uh, with the uh, architecture studies also human perception, but that's because that's human perception which will be able to say what we need, what are the specifications with for a uh, efficient system. And naturally, the future engine design will arrive. It's lots of uh, uh, AR and uh, traditional uh, system uh, to be used. Uh, um, Sometimes, not all the time, uh, with the uh, more traditional CAD CAM uh, tools, which are already in thousands of uh, units on the desk of the uh, engineer. So, uh, in conclusion, uh, I wanted to show that you see a, a short video here. So you can be, for example, in a situation with uh, a traffic uh, which you don't like, but you can have it in VR, and still you are, and now you are in a beautiful environment because you have a helmet, for example, in a car, an autonomous driving car, and all of these images are, are, are arriving today. All of the cars, they have cameras. All of the, the, the cars which are sold today, they have cameras, and there are millions and tens of millions of cars which are gathering images all the time in real time. All of these images will be used. <coughs> and maybe you have noticed also that NVIDIA simulation tool for autonomous driving is using directly all of these images to provide the environment. So as uh, social uh, stakes, there are some uh, system limitations, uh, uh, especially uh, cyber sickness. There are some new uh, stakes for AR, auto um, augmented reality, for industry 4.0, for autonomous vehicles, but also for uh, smartphone applications, because everybody can download an application on a smartphone and can put in a uh, helmet. And naturally, there is an issue about the uh, 3D uh, data availability. For example, for BIM, we still need some, uh, that's my very last slide. <laughs> um, so we still need uh, this data, and naturally, we have to uh, um, control uh, what we will do with all of this uh, data. So I would like to thank you for your attention, and I was wanted to record that uh, there will be a DS Europe uh, VR in, uh, in Antibes, uh, close to Sofia Antipolis in Nice, uh, September 75, and you will uh, learn more about all of these, uh, all of these issues, issues if, you, if you come to see us there. Thank you very much.